you had a call in a, from a and &E colleague. There was a child person with 17 years of age has a left ring finger injury. He has advised you to see the x-rays. The patient complains of immediate pain and swelling and deviation of the finger after altercation. On assessment, the ring finger is already angulated, shortened, and slight hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion at the proximal interphalangeal joint. There is no range of motion possible in the digit. The base of the proximal phalanx is prominent palpable in the palm and deviated on the radial side. Capirifil is normal. The X-ray and lateral view clearly demonstrate a vodar dislocation of the proximal phalanx relative to the metacarpal head. In the scenario, if it's presented, it can have differentials like sprain of the metacarpal joint, a fracture of distal metacarpal or proximal phalanx, or a volar or a dorsal metacarpophalangeal dislocation. In our case, it was a volar intra uh, volar MCP dislocation of the ring finger. The radial collateral ligament is presumed still attached to the small fracture fragment, uh, but the other collateral ligament must have been completely disrupted to permit the, this degree of displacement. Although the dislocation of the metacarpophalangeal joint is very rare and can arise from both hyperextension and hyperflexion injuries. Successful close reduction has been reported and should be attempted after radiographic confirmation of the diagnosis. The volar plate can be avulsed from the base of the proximal phalanx by hyperextension and becomes interposed at the metacarpophalangeal joint, trapping the proximal phalanx between the flexor tendon and the lumbricals. The dorsal capsule can be evolved proximally from the metacarpal by hyperflexion and becoming interposed in the joint, thus blocking reduction. In this case, a closed reduction under general anesthesia was attempted in the operative room but was unsuccessful. Open reduction was performed through the volar zigzag incision over the ring finger metacarpal extending up to the proximal flexion crease. The digital neurovascular bundle was identified and retracted. The base of the proximal phalanx was found to be displaced volar and radial to the flexor tendons. There was an articular fragment missing from the radial base of the proximal phalanx. The volar plate and the collateral ligaments were no longer attached to the proximal phalanx but were found dorsal to the proximal phalanx. The base of the proximal phalanx was trapped between the flexor tendon on the ulnar side, lumbricals on the radial side, and water plate on the dorsal side. During the approach, the A1 pulley was incised and the flexor tendon returned to their normal position, volar to the proximal phalanx. The base of the phalanx was then easily reduced. The introsious wire was placed through the drill holes to secure a, the fracture fragment to the base of the proximal phalanx, restoring normal alignment. The water plate was reattached to the proximal phalanx with a 4-0 purine passed through the periosteum, and flexor tendon sheet and the lateral edges of A2 pili were also repaired. After reduction and repair, the MP joint was stable through the outer range of motion from 0 to 9 degrees. Skin closure and a short arm cast was applied. The metacarpophalan joint in flexion and PIP joint in full extension. As there was a fracture, we planned to continue with the cast for further three weeks. Gentle active range of motion commenced at three weeks. The patient became passive range, be, began passive range of motion, uh, blocking and strengthening exercise was started at six weeks. And at three months, the patient was discharged from further follow-ups. A molar approach is preferred for open reduction of complex water metacarpophalangeal joint dislocation produced by hyperextension. This approach allows for removal of the water plate from the joint and reattachment to the proximal phalanx, but carries the risk of neurovascular bundle injury. A dorsal approach is preferred for volar metacarpophalangeal joint dislocation produced by hyperflexion. This approach allows for extraction of the dorsal capsule or the extensor epineurosis in the thumb 
from the MP joint. When the mechanism of injury is not clear, one may need to make both ruler and dorsal incision to achieve the reduction. Complication may include stiffness, degenerative arthritis, digital nerve injury, and misdiagnosis resulting in delayed treatment.